Hey guys, today we're gonna talk about the 10 worst men's style mistakes. Now before I get into the list, I wanna lay a few things out there right up front. The first is that this list is not intended to make you feel bad, to make you feel stupid, or to put you down in any way, shape, or form if you happen to find yourself making one of these mistakes. Now this list is intended to help you look your best. Now second, personal style is a very subjective thing. So what one person likes, another may not like at all. What one person considers a mistake, someone else might consider right. The thing with this list is that these items are not subjective at all. It's either right or wrong, which leads me to the third point I want to make. The good news is that every single one of these mistakes is easily corrected. So let's just jump right into it. Okay, so number one, this is one I see all the time, and that is wearing a jacket, a suit jacket or a blazer that is too big. And it's not just a little too big, it's always like two sizes too big. So one thing to know when you're picking out a suit jacket is there are things that a tailor can fix. A tailor can fix the sleeve length. A tailor can fix how it fits in your body. It can let it out or they can take it in so it fits your body right. But the one thing a tailor cannot fix is the shoulders. So if the shoulder is wrong, the jacket is going to look bad. And it looks particularly bad if the shoulders are too big. So what does right look like when it comes to the shoulder? Well, there are different kinds of shoulders. I'm wearing a very soft shoulder right here. Um, and you'll also find a rope shoulder, which has a lot more structure. But no matter what kind of shoulder your jacket has, it should fall right off the sleeve of the jacket should fall right off where the shoulder it should actually look like a nice roll. That is what you're looking for when you're looking for a suit jacket or a blazer. And you, that's the one thing that you wanna make sure fits when you get it. Okay, number two is sort of a personal pet peeve of mine. I think it's a mistake. And that is wearing a crew neck t-shirt under a button up shirt when you've got it unbuttoned like I'm wearing. Now, anytime you get dressed, everything you wear, whether it's your jacket, your shirt, if you're unbuttoning it, if you have a tie on, all this is meant to frame your face. And for me, if you're wearing a crew neck sweater, a crew neck sweater, <laughs> so for me, if you're wearing a crew neck t-shirt underneath a shirt like this, you're really disrupting that line and it's very distracting to the eye, so just don't do it. All right, number three, leaving the stitching in your jacket vents when you bring it back from the store. I know you know what I'm talking about. You know, when you buy a jacket, the vents are always stitched shut the uh, suit jacket pockets are always sewn shut, and, including the breast pocket. And the reason they do this is to help the jacket keep its shape before they sell it. But when you get it home, you need to unstitch that. It's not, not supposed to be there. Uh, and that also goes to um, the label that you will often find on the sleeve that sells the kind of fabric or the brand of the, the suit or the jacket you're buying. You need to remove that too. You don't wanna advertise that. And it's not supposed to be there. Number four is what I refer to as the height of bro couture. And this is wearing a button-up shirt, a dress shirt with a blazer, but untucked. I remember being in college and this was the thing that people did. They wanted to get dressed up, but they were too cool to like really be completely dressed up. So the way to kind of you know, give the finger to the system was to untuck the shirt. It was like, yeah, I'm dressy, but I'm casual at the same time. It just doesn't look good, guys. Um, if you want to do a casually tailored thing or be dressy, but casual at the same time, there are other ways to do it. Untucking your shirt is not the way to do it. It's like, you gotta decide, are you dressed up or are you casual? Make a decision and go one way or the other, but untucking a dress shirt is a no-go. Don't do it. Number five, trousers too long. Now I wanna distinguish here about your trousers being too long versus the different types of breaks that you can have on your pants. Now, the type of break, whether it's a full break, a medium break, a slight break, or no break at all is a very personal choice. It's subjective, it has to do with your personal style. It has to do with your body type. So you're free to make that choice on your own. Now what I'm talking about trousers being too long is this is the one thing that can really stand out as, or make someone stand out as not paying any attention to or putting any time or effort into their style or their personal appearance. So, you know, if you're buying pants that are too long, just get them hemmed 
to whatever length you like and fits your personal style. But this is one thing that I can't stand seeing. Just spend the $15, get them hemmed. Now this doesn't apply just to dress pants. This also applies to jeans as well. Going back to the whole bro couture thing, I remember being in college, dudes would have jeans that were just too long and you know, they'd be stepping on the back and they'd get frayed. Listen, it didn't look cool then. It's not cool now. It never will be cool. So it's important to have your jeans hemmed also. All right, the sixth mistake is the exact opposite of the first one. It is wearing a suit or pants or anything that is simply too tight. You need to distinguish between slim fitting and well tailored because slim fitting is good for some. If you happen to be a Dior model, that's great. You could wear that stuff, but you really have to know your body. And the important thing is that even if you like that slim fitting look, you might not have the body type to pull it off. You need to recognize that and dress your body. You will look better because of it. All right, big mistake here, guys. Number seven, ironic or graphic t-shirts. This is just a case of knowing when to grow up. In college, okay, sure, maybe it's all right, but you know, as a 30-year-old man, professional, there's no need for it. You don't need to be telling people, look how clever I am and look how smart I am through your t-shirt. You can find other ways to do that. This novelty t-shirts, get rid of them, time to grow up. Along the same lines, the eighth mistake is poor quality footwear. There comes a time in a man's life when he needs to own a nice pair of shoes and not just one pair of shoes, but two nice pairs. I recommend a black pair and a brown pair. And I'm not talking about the pair of Skechers that kind of look like dress shoes, but kind of look like sneakers. No, you need to have like the straight up dress shoe and it's time to invest in it. And you don't have to spend a lot of money but I think you should have a nice pair of shoes. So if we're in like the 150 to $300 range, you're talking Cole Haan, you're talking Johnson & Murphy, Allen Edmonds. These are all great shoes that you will invest in and you will have for a very long time and it will make a very big impact. And I wanna say too that, you know, if you're going out on a date, you're meeting a girl for the first time, other than your face, probably the first thing she's going to look at is your shoes. So make sure your shoe game's on point. Which brings us to number nine, matching exactly. Now I want to draw a distinction here between wearing the same color because monochromatic look is a really cool way to make a big impact. Uh, and it's very simple. What I'm talking about here is particularly matching your tie to your pocket square exactly. We've all seen the sets that you can buy at the department store. It's too easy, it, you know, it just looks cheap. It looks like you haven't spent any time or put any effort into picking these out. What you need to do is find something that is complementary. So the tie should complement the outfit. The pocket square should complement the outfit. And the reason is those accessories should pull everything together. So if you've got some blues or browns, make sure there's a little blue or brown in the tire pocket square and it doesn't need to be the same exact blue or brown look at complementary colors find ways to make it interesting but just do not match these two things the tie and the pocket square exactly which brings us to the last mistake which before i tell you what it is i want to uh just preface this by saying that i am not a big stickler for the quote unquote rules of style i know there are lots of people out there who abide by these rules and if you don't follow them you're wrong and you look bad, but you know, I, what I would say to that, or my only rule is, if it looks right, it is right. So that's kind of the rules I live by. But the one thing that is in the rule book, I believe that I will not budge on is this next mistake, the last mistake, and that is wearing a tie bar when you're wearing a waistcoat. Now let me explain why I don't like this one. It's because when you look at both of those things practically, the tie bar and the waistcoat, they're serving the same purpose, which is to hold your tie in place. So if you're wearing them both at the same time, that's like the department of redundancy department. And I don't know, I just don't see the point in it. So I'm sure there are a lot of comments about some of these. Did I get it right? Did I leave some out? Are there ones that you think I should add to the list? So leave a comment, let me know what you think. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching.